Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Josephine Meets. I'm Josephine Warner, and today I'm here with Ian Greg, who is a legal services entrepreneur. And it might sound very serious, but Ian is one of the kind of like not so serious legal people, even though legal is serious. Let's kind of, we're probably going to need to unravel that a little bit to really make sense of what I'm currently saying. So hi, <laughs> Ian. So happy to have you here. Hi there, Josephine. Thanks for having me. Hi, everyone watching. So if you could just give me, I know you've created or started several ventures in the past. Now you're the founder of New, which is a legal services company located in the UK. Can you please give us a little bit of background of your kind of like entrepreneurial journey and where you currently are and what, because I know you have big plans on going international. So give us a little bit about info about yourself. Okay, sure. Um, well, a snapshot of my background is that I uh, came to the UK from South Africa about 14 years ago, roughly, uh, moved to London, and I started off in the property development and investment game. And from there, I started getting a flavor for what it was like to, well, I watched the founders of that, that business that I worked for operate and, and grow their property development business. And I realized it's something that I really liked the look of, and I thought, hang on, I can probably do this myself. So after a few years with them, uh, I ended up getting into the, the property management game and building up a network of clients and people who are buying and selling properties in, in London, people who are fixing them up and kind of just basically helped them with their portfolios. And that happened for a number of years. And then I got into business consulting and I thought the property stuff was a little bit boring. Uh, you know, in some ways it's exciting, but mixing investments and money with people's homes kind of started freaking me out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so as much as I do love still helping people from, from time to time with property stuff, I really like the business aspect and I got into marketing and, you know, set up a business in the property marketing space, photography and video and things. But, um, the, you know, the, there are a few other ventures involved, but basically the, the common thread was helping businesses to do well. And for mm -hmm. some reason, I enjoyed the legal stuff, you know, with, uh, with property, property businesses, there are often legal issues. I don't want to say problems or disputes necessarily but there's a lot of legal stuff that goes on and yes people aren't very happy a lot of the time with with that so i started learning the law myself kind of like diy law and then found the property law a bit boring so i was like oh the business law you know i started learning that and basically just along the way got really into the law and experienced what it was like being someone who's a recipient of legal services because often we were dealing with solicitors or maybe it was talking with barristers things like that and ultimately i found that the law was my passion you know believe it or not helping people helping businesses and uh, the law being the foundation of all of that so i decided to take the plunge study the law do an mba at the same time just to like come up you know have a fusion of something that could help me for the future and help me to help other people uh, going forward into the future so that kind of takes me to to roughly where i am today i mean i set up new which is a legal services business about a year ago give or take and it's going pretty well. I've tried to tackle some of the key problems that entrepreneurs face and a lot, a lot of the problems that I faced and my previous clients faced to do with expensive legal services. They're quite rigid, you know, as much as lawyers can be brilliant people and they're really intelligent and, and often they really do want to help. They are kind of confined within the, the strict rules of, of a law firm and they're not really responsive and they're really involved in the business. They don't go, they can't go above and beyond, even if they want to in many cases because of of everything they have going on. So I thought, let me come up with something that could really work to help people, you know, genuinely along their journey from startup to getting ready to scale up and then to, to grow and develop. And uh, here we are today. Yeah, that's super exciting. And, and I'm getting loads of thoughts because you mentioned networking and we are going to look into that a little bit more later on, kind of like building a community, uh, because that is also the way how you and I connected where kind of like we, we started networking and then we're now in, in your community of the new yeah. leaders. But before that, I read one time that, you know, people only invest in burglary, burglary alarms after they've had someone breaking into their homes. Yeah. Is it the same? Would you say it's the same kind of like pattern when people come to you asking for legal services? Uh, so to an extent, yes, I think, uh, you know, second, third time founders, legal stuff for them is just a case of let's get it done, get it out the way. And um, there's an element of needing legal services in, in the early stages of certain businesses that have a, an aspect where it's navigating regulatory compliance stuff. 
and also other copyright commercial corporate type stuff. So mm -hmm. they, they just sort of have to, and some first time founders just have to engage a lawyer. Whereas yes, for a lot of them who don't strictly need one, uh, you know, I don't like to say that no one doesn't need a lawyer, but um, in those cases, yes, people end up only getting stuff done once they've, uh, you know, been, been burned basically. Yeah, I think we, or most of us know about, you know, the privacy policies we need to have in place, the terms and uh, terms and conditions we need to have in place for our online businesses. And what many people do, and I, I must admit, I did it too the very first time. I copy pasted someone else's privacy policy. I don't do that any longer <laughs> to right. make it very clear because it is, I mean, that is a big thing that can go really wrong if we don't have that in place, especially when it comes to the, to the GDPR and and I don't know if you have separate laws in, in or regulations in the UK too. But what are kind of the basics that entrepreneurs need to think about and what many people kind of don't really focus on? Yeah, sure. And um, well, just on the previous point, the, the the things the thing that I or the way I see it is often people have no contracts, the wrong mm -hmm. contracts, or they have the right contracts at the wrong time, and all of those aren't very good. So just avoiding any of those would, would be the best best way forward, really. But um, in terms of the essentials and what people may need, the way I look at it is in terms of layers. So your base layer or your foundational layer is data protection, privacy compliance mm -hmm. stuff, which can be handled quite affordably using various uh, providers online. You know, we help with that. There are a lot of people that can help with that and do it quite affordably if you shop around enough, but it just, you just need the basics there. And then if your business needs something a little bit more elaborate based on what you're doing, your services and your activities, and whether you're international, then of course you need to engage someone who can understand what you're doing and give you the solution mm -hmm. that works for, for your plans. That's data protection compliance. And then you've got your essential foundational terms and conditions which uh, aren't a legal requirement, but they're a, a safety precaution essentially. So you've got ones that could go on your website, which mm -hmm. deal with how people use your website and making sure that you're protecting yourself if someone does suffer some form of loss as a result of using your website. It just sets out the rules of engagement and has the uh, rules for copyright and just basically you know, statements and notices telling people that you own the copyrights, who you are, things like that. It also can tell people what you don't do so that you don't end up creeping into a, or, or uh, branching out into a, a regulated space unknowingly. So it just sets out that you don't do that. But yeah, so your terms and conditions and then whatever your trading documents are. So you've got those that first one layer, which is compliance and terms and conditions stuff. And then you've got your uh, second layer, which is your trading agreements and things. So engaging clients to deliver your services, products, digital downloads, selling goods, things like that. Uh, and then your copyright aspect, which is another layer, but is something that needs to be tackled early on, which we can come back to this stuff. I don't want to um, ramble too much. And then your corporate, <laughs> your corporate stuff, which is really at the top, who owns the business? What are their roles? Things like that. And then of course, employees and everything else in between, really. What I can imagine now that people who are listening to this, who might be like first time entrepreneurs or haven't been taking this too seriously when they hear that d these different layers they're like oh my god i only have my privacy policy and my and, and potentially my tnc too where do i even start where where should they even start so basically the options that you have are the more cheap and cheerful online terms and conditions <laughs> websites so that you'll go on there if you provide a down the line option uh, down the line type service like consulting or uh, maybe you, you sell digital products online, maybe e-commerce, whatever the case may be, you can get that relatively affordably. And sometimes there's an aspect of uh, personal service. So someone can help you put it together. That's one option. On the other side of the spectrum, you go to a law firm and you engage them to understand what you're doing and put together like bespoke documents for you. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle, you've got various different options. It's just a case of working out what how complex your business is and what your needs are. Mm -hmm. uh, we we kind of fall, we offer different services within that spectrum. But yeah, you can, shopping around is essential and it, it all depends on what jurisdiction you're in because in the UK, you can engage someone who's not qualified but who's highly experienced uh, and, you know, p possibly someone who just works in an in the unregulated space and they'll be really affordable and you'll get good quality stuff but you might not have the same recourse of professional indemnity insurance with them. So if you feel like you really need like a full, fully protected, high caliber type setup, 
law firms shop around for options in between you know there are a lot of options people just don't know them and uh you know i'm obviously more than happy to, to guide people and what those options might be and then your cheap and cheerful stuff at the bottom is always a good starting point to, to at least look at <laughs> yeah i definitely agree so while we have this kind of reach out to you let's let's quickly cover that piece too so how can people best connect with you ian uh, mainly on LinkedIn. So my name is mm -hmm. Ian Gregg. I'm on LinkedIn and uh, the business is called new. We're changing our domain, which will be new legal soon, new hyphen legal. But for now it's n3www.com. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way to do it. We will add kind of like your connection things and, and every links, whatever underneath these show notes, but, uh, and we will repeat this uh, at the end too, because I also know that you build your, you build your business very openly on LinkedIn which I think is really admirable because people are, people want to learn these things. People are so scared of actually even starting a business, daring to do a business. And when having someone like you showing what, you know, the ups and downs and everything in between is actually really inspirational. What made you kind of, what motivated you to start sharing your story on LinkedIn? I, I tried LinkedIn a few times in the past, like years ago, I used to use Facebook and, and YouTube. And then I tried LinkedIn and it didn't really work for me back then. I heard that it was very, very good for a lot of people. And I, you know, chatted to a number of people and they said, look, Ian, if you just commit to LinkedIn, like one channel, focus on the channel and mm -hmm. be consistent and come up with something, obviously you have to give a decent product or service, then it'll work. You just need to give it time. So I, I literally just jumped in and, and just did that. You know, I committed to it. I had to iterate the business, which changed a few times, pivoted. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I just knew I had to stick with it and it started working. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's really the only reason why I, I started doing it. And then now, yes, I'm an advocate for, for people to, to use it. I think it's essential. There's an element of building trust with people when you demonstrate that you're out there and you're in the open, you're not just going to vanish. Like if things don't go according to plan, you'll always be around. So you've got that sort of like safety net that instills a form of like trust and confidence in people. Uh, but otherwise, really, you know, it's like it is apparently the pl place to be. There's no doubt about it. But there's a lot of time that can be wasted doing the wrong thing there. And I think it's, it's unfortunate. I have seen a number of people who have been uh, doing the same kind of stuff for a long time and not getting anywhere. So it definitely takes a little bit of of, of something a little bit special if you can and to me i mean it's like i just didn't know what what i could do that would be interesting so i figured building in public is probably a good one because other people are on the journey so, <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and you you just moved back to the uk so this whole thing from south africa you know with amazing scenery you know you going surfing every day or every probably not every day but <laughs> these amazing yeah. pictures and then the move back to to the uk so kind of mixing a little bit like your personal life and your personal experiences together mm. with your business also makes it much more relatable and also aspirational because the, I think that both of you and I, we kind of promote the lifestyle business where we have a business that is built around our lifestyle and not the other way around. Mm. I think that is, that is also really. I totally agree. E. If if we want to stand out, that is, and not be, you know, the boring of kind of, I just published a new risk report on <laughs> or whatever it might be. <laughs> yeah. So Definitely. I also know that you started a community on LinkedIn. It's called the New Leaders Community. And we meet every Friday, um, 11, 11 o'clock CET, 10 o'clock your time, BST. What kind of like motivated you to kick off this? Because it's a free community so far. So what, what kind of, like what motivated you to kick off this whole community? Well, you know what? Um, everyone keeps talking about community and they're like, you know, build a community on LinkedIn or build a community around your business. And I, I just stopped for a minute and I thought, okay, what do people mean? What, what are they talking about? Like, is it a, a network of people that are always bumping up your posts, which is, you know, nice. Uh, is it authentic? That's always another question. Um, is it a community where people are paying to be involved or if, if it's free, what is it? So I just tried to unpack what this whole community thing means. And I'm part of another community called Founders Sunday, which is actually really cool. And they do a similar thing to me. And I feel part of their community like this. There's more of a there's something more to it than just everyone chit chatting and 
you know, like clicking like on each other's posts and meeting up for awkward networking. There's actually more involvement. People are interested and they're interesting people as well. So I thought, you know what, let me try and build this up, see where it goes. It started just with like reaching out to, you know, five people and then 10 and then 50 and now 150 or so. And uh, just to bring people together, you know, it can be a lonely journey. And also it's good to learn from one another and, and uh, bounce ideas, have support. There's an element of accountability that comes with it. So to me, that's what a community is. It's support, accountability, growing the network. And ultimately there, there's a customer base that's being built, whether people know it or not. Inevitably, everyone there has something to offer and others need something. Uh, and having something that brings people together enables everyone to have to be seen firstly and to engage, but also to end up with a possible revenue stream at the end of the day. And I'm, I'm quite transparent about that. You know, this, the, the, my sales funnel involves free community, paid community, legal services. That's mm -hmm. how it works. You know, I'm, I'm in business, but um, to build a community and do something that's interesting and exciting and that actually benefits others. Uh, that's that to me is what makes it wor worthwhile along with the obviously the commercial aspect of it which is earning money um, at the end of the day you also give uh, us the community members to to show up ourselves and to to also kind of present what it is that we're doing which then obviously makes it really interesting for us to you know to be there and to show ourselves and to connect with others and and the other piece <laughs> I probably almost forgot about it yeah about the kind of like, people totally underestimate the one, you know, people knowing someone who might know someone. And by by having you as kind of like the leader, leader of the pack or having some member in the in the group, when we get to see that and when someone else comes and asks me, hey, do you know someone about legal services or anything? You will be on the top of my mind. And I think people kind of like a little bit underestimates that yeah. the whole piece of actually engaging with other people without kind of like thinking first time, oh, I'm going to sell to this person because that person might not be at all interested in your services and it might not be, be at all kind of like need your services, but they might know someone who needs your services. And I think that is super important to really remember. And it is a long, it is a long, long haul game. We're not yeah. in a sprint, right? Completely right. I think I think the community aspect is fundamental. You know, of course, there's your outreach and your marketing. There's your referrals and things like that, uh, and then community. And a few people I speak with do find it a bit weird. And to be honest, I did find it weird as well. Like, why am I spending time on LinkedIn? You know, like in the past, I'd built businesses by phoning people, networking, mm -hmm. going to meet them, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas these days, genuinely, you can actually grow a thriving business through someone else's community, you know, it can make up a good proportion of your income, mm -hmm. or you can create one for yourself. And it doesn't mean it has to be this thing with bells and whistles and, you know, like international TED speakers coming to present. Um, it just means giving other people a, a decent experience and letting them connect with one another and to be seen and improve their own chances of, of, of winning business eventually from, from people, if that's yeah. what their, their objective is. Exactly. So now you, you kind of like we started the, this whole talk with you, you sharing a little bit about your journey so far, talking a little bit about new and what's going on, about kind of like the free community, the paid community and the legal services. What's in the future for you, Ian? OK, well, basically, the, the, the key objective of new is to create some of the highest quality legal documentation uh, for a really low cost. Uh, and that's all relative. But the, the novel concept we're trying to create is a plug and play system. It's not mm -hmm. just document here, document there. It's something that's all linked together, like an operating system mm -hmm. so that anyone can start a business on the platform and they have access to the compliance and contracts they need, not templates, as I say, but like it's genuinely something that's like mixed into what they're doing. And then they mm -hmm. can build, they can build up eventually. Uh, expand their business, bring other people on board. It's all really easy and really affordable in the same way that you'll plug into something like uh, Calendly, for instance, you know, we might be plugged into those sites so people can agree to terms of service. It'll, it'll, it, it'll be distributed across the internet and giving everyone the legal protection that they essentially need to limit their liability and to trade and operate and grow nationally and eventually internationally 
for a fraction of the cost of what you would be paying a law firm and then to have the support and the community aspect you know we we really want to, to help people do well uh, and it's not just saying that like you know in that's my, one of my values is helping other people it's compassion you know it's courage and compassion it's helping people who have the courage to put everything on the line to go out there and change their future in business uh, and they don't want to spend bucket loads on lawyers to, to make it happen or consultants for that matter but they well, need afraid something. of not being compliant because i think that is also that, a big yeah. thing right? yeah that, yeah that's the it. other kind of piece of the coin yeah or exactly. side of the coin. So uh, it's it'll be a platform for national and international growth. Uh, that's re that's really what it is in a nutshell. For a fraction of the cost that you'd pay someone else to do it. And what I see is, you know, with you having the community, the paid community as part of that service. I mean, that is a game changer. That must be a gap in the market that no one else have, has even thought about before. Yes. Uh, so a lot of businesses are doing similar things to to me. Uh, I, I'm. I'm trying to keep up to speed with what everyone's doing, but yes, we're hitting we're hitting some gaps. Some of the stuff we're doing is very unique, and other stuff is taking the best from some great businesses around the world, big corporates and other smaller ones. And hopefully, we'll be um, bringing on great people with great ideas to help us take it forward. Because at the heart of all of it is collaboration. We're not coming up with something with, that we think everyone needs. It's a case of coming up with something that other people tell us we need, and other people get involved to help us build. And so I think that's what's going to set us apart from uh, different types of competitors that we have. Yeah, I definitely think so too. So since you have started several businesses and there might be someone listening or watching to this right now and they're like, oh, I would love to start my business, but I don't know how. I don't know the first step I need to take. What would your advice be to that person? There are a few things going on. And earlier I, I mentioned quite a lot of stuff in a very short space. Uh, and I don't <laughs> want to watch like, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to terrify anyone either because it, it is very easy these days to set up a business. It, it just depends what, what you're doing. But speak to other people, find out what other people are doing. You know, there's no such thing really as a shortcut in business, but there's there's it's a case of trying to take the most optimal route or avoid the, the most tr troublesome one, basically. Take the least troublesome route, at least, essentially. So talk to other people, get as much knowledge and info from others who've walked that road already. Uh, and people are very generous, you'll find, if you do look around enough um, and they'll share their time and knowledge and insights and things with you. That's really crucial. And just spending enough time to build up a base of people around you. Like I was saying, with legal stuff, you know, you can find someone who's helpful or you can find a consultant who's very helpful and who wants, to, wants you to succeed or a marketing company those are the kind of people that you that you want maybe maybe not so much the people who just want your money and nothing mm. else because they will happily sell you what they offer uh, mm. to get the money you want people who don't sell you anything unless what they have to offer is the right thing for you those are the kind of people that that i think are great to chat to and the mm -hmm. rest will start falling into place if you can get those those aspects right and i also think your journey shows that you you start and then you pivot. It it changes. It's not as if you start and then you stay in that for the next 10 or 20 years. It actually further develops. And the steps that you knew kind of you had no clue about that you were going to take are they actually show themselves. So it's just kind of start walking. Mm -hmm. Maybe reaching out to you, maybe connecting with Ian on on LinkedIn, maybe joining his his group of inspiring entrepreneurs just to be there, an observer, a listener. And then be inspired by everyone else. Start having those discussions, having those chats with people. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it sounds like a great sounds like a great plan. There's a lot out there that's free. Uh, it's just a case of cutting through the noise. And this doesn't apply just to people who are starting from scratch. You know, there are a lot of people who are at a point right now in their business, whether it's a year on or five years on. And mm -hmm. there's a lot that you can do to do really well going forward. But it's a case of taking a step back and thinking about what what it is that you need to do and finding finding what the next step is going to be because the the right path can lead you to something great and the wrong path can make things really annoying and uh, frustrating and not very profitable. So um, it's an exciting time for a lot of us now. It absolutely is. So thank you so much, Ian, for being a real valued guest on my show. So how can people connect with you? 
Uh, so mainly on LinkedIn. Thanks, Josephine. Uh, LinkedIn, my name's Ian Gregg. Uh, hopefully I'll pop up if you search for me. I don't know how many other Ian Greggs there are. Uh, but otherwise, it's my website, n3www.com. We will make sure to add kind of your links, etc., underneath this video too. And if you like this video, please like it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I don't only have Ian as a fantastic guest. I always have. I always invite more inspiring entrepreneurs to come and share their stories and to actually give really actionable tips and tricks, which is, by the way, another really cheap option. It's for free. It's on YouTube. You can tune in here and get those tips and tricks for free every day. So thank you so much, Ian, for being here. Thanks, Josephine. Thanks, everyone.